teams often struggle with capturing, organizing, prioritizing and communicating ideas, leading to missed opportunities and disorganized workflows. Jira Product Discovery addresses these challenges by ensuring a structured way to manage ideas and ensure that valuable insights are not lost. In this video, I'm going to show you how to leverage Jira Product Discovery to streamline your workflows, communicate effectively and deliver features that truly add value to your business. So let's get started. Jira Product Discovery was launched in early 2023 to help product teams capture, prioritize and manage ideas effectively. It is designed for product managers and product teams who need a structured approach to product discovery and development. Since its release, Jira Product Discovery has seen several major updates including the introduction of the timeline view and enhanced integration options. These updates have made it easier for teams to visualize their product roadmaps, communicate delivery dates and integrate their workflows with other tools in the Atlassian ecosystem. It helps teams streamline their ideation process, validate assumptions and ensure their product development efforts are aligned with strategic outcomes. To get started, all you need to do is to provide your email and it's free for up to three creators and unlimited contributors. As I've already installed Jira Product Discovery, I will skip this step. Once in Jira, click on the project dropdown on the Jira navigation bar and click create project. Now scroll down in the side panel to the very bottom where you see the list of available products and select Jira Product Discovery. You can choose between three options, although I haven't seen much of a difference between the two first templates. So this is something that might improve over time. However, for now, I think they're pretty much the same. Next, select the product discovery template. And as you can see, it includes a single issue type, which is idea, as well as a predefined workflow with statuses like parking lot discovery, ready for delivery and so on and so forth. Just like in Jira, you can modify the workflow. You can create pathways between the statuses, which are called transitions and automate repetitive actions using rules. Again, just like you would do in good old Jira. So let's select this template and enter the project name. Next, select the access level. You can choose between private, in which case only users you specify will be able to open the project limited where everyone can open it, but only specified users can create ideas. This would be the creators and open where everyone with access to the product can act as a creator. So let's select open and create the project. All right. So my next big thing discovery project is already created for me together with some sample data. Before we proceed, keep in mind that since I am the administrator of this project, I am able to customize the views and, for example, create new views using the options right here. I can edit the fields and their select options and update the information presented on the different screens, which you would not be able to do if you are a regular user. The idea here is to control the backlogs. Users should be invited with predefined ways to contribute only rather than direct item creation or editing the scope of your backlog. For example, they will be able to add comments, vote or tag the customers who requested a feature instead of creating ideas directly in the backlog. All right, so before we start exploring the different views available here, let's talk about the process. There are a couple of things that you want to do here. The first would be to define the goals, organize your backlog, create the ideas, gather feedback and insights, prioritize your ideas. And the last step would be to create a roadmap for your teams and stakeholders. You might want to start with defining the vision, mission, goals and strategies. For that purpose, you can use the good old confluence space. I won't be explaining this in details as this is quite straightforward. Now, once you have your goals, this can be entered into your product discovery view. You will need to be an administrator. To do that, you can click on the goal, click edit fields, and in the side panel, you will have the list of predefined goals that are already created. A goal would be a high level objective that guides the direction and priorities 
of your product development efforts. To set goals, you can use different frameworks, for example, OKR, or the objectives and key results, KPIs, key performance indicators, or SMART. Goals SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So let's create a SMART goal as an example. Achieve a 20% reduction in user drop-off during the onboarding process in the next six months. Once I hit enter, the goal will be added to the select options for this particular field. I can also color code it, so let's select a purple color and add an emoji to it. Once the goal or the outcomes are clear, then the team can focus on product ideas to achieve them. The first step is adapting a product backlog. I've seen many times that the backlog is a mix of everything, so features, requests, tasks, bugs and ideas, everything in one place which can be really overwhelming. The main object you work with here is the ideas. Ideas are long-lived objects and they should not leave the backlog when development starts but rather live throughout the iterations of discovery and delivery until they deliver the required impact. So let me add some ideas supporting my goal and I'll be right back. All right, so I added some ideas. Now let me link them to my goal and add a category so they have a separate swim lane with a set value when I group by category. All right, so I added a new category called onboarding. All my ideas are in the onboarding swim lane. I can now apply a filter to filter out all the previous ideas that I don't want to look at right now. So let me create a filter. I will use the category field and select the new category that I just created. Perfect. Now I can focus on the ideas that I've just added. And the next step would be to actually assess the impact and the effort required to deliver this idea. So here, these are the rating fields. I can manually add some rating, let's say for my first idea, which would be to allow users to experience a core feature early in the onboarding process. I think that's a very high impact uh, and would definitely contribute to achieving my goal. And I would need to ask the dev teams to estimate the effort required to, to deliver it. So let's say it is not that difficult to deliver and let's set it to two. I will also apply that for my remaining ideas. Now we have initial impact assessment completed. However, there are more advanced ways to do that. So for example, I can switch to the impact assessment view and actually there is an additional field here, which I can also add to the previous view. But since it's already here, let's use this one. This one is a function field or a weighted score that takes into account the impact and insights on the idea. So based on the result, it assigns each idea a value between zero and a hundred. So I can edit this field and add some additional criteria to calculate my impact score. So I can add an input here and for example, also include what I've previously selected and I haven't really mentioned, which would be the weight from the goal itself. The basic rule here is you do not want to exceed 100%. So I can reduce it to, for example, 40 and set 10% for the goal. All right, perfect. Now, as you can see, whenever I change the impact, the score will be automatically updated for me as I collect additional insights from my team. And this is something that I really like. I can actually use a Chrome extension or a Slack app or the Teams app to create such insights from the different teams, such as the product analytics support team and the customer success team and use it also to automatically update the score. So let's say I want to create an insight. The customer loves the new onboarding feature and I can set the impact here to five, which will also update the impact score accordingly. So it actually adds points. And as you can see right now, it shows 85 points, which is quite high. If I edit this field, you will also see that I can add formatting rules and color code the specified value range. So to sum up, conducting an impact assessment is crucial for understanding the potential effects of new features or changes or simply your ideas. 
and the key to success is ensuring that all relevant information is available and using a formula that takes into account various factors such as resource allocation, stakeholders input, all sorts of potential risks. So you can add different fields here that will address these areas, but if you need expert advice on how to configure Jira product discovery, integrate it with Jira, so not only take care of the idealization stage, but also of the delivery, reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to share our experience with over 200 satisfied customers. All right, so let's switch to the next view. And the next one is actually a matrix view, which allows you to plot two fields on the X and Y axis to visualize how your ideas rank against each other. For example, effort versus impact. This view is useful for quickly showing where ideas rank in the prioritization and facilitating high level prioritization discussions. Next is the board view, which categorizes ideas into columns and making it easier to share and tailor information to the audience. It's ideal for focusing on what you're committing to rather than when. It also allows you to group ideas into buckets or swim lanes for better visualization. So main example or use cases would include to use it as a roadmap, just like Atlassian created it for us. So we can organize ideas by now, next and later, a common approach to creating a roadmap. Also, it's great for quarterly planning. So you can group ideas by quarters or use it for a leadership view, which will show how your ideas align with company goals. And the next view would be the timeline view, which displays the ideas across a monthly or quarterly timeline, which helps teams plan and communicate delivery dates. This view is best for communicating rough estimates of delivery dates and helping dependent teams track their own roadmaps. Now, the last view on the list here is the delivery status. And this feature allows you to track the progress of ideas as they move from conception to completion. So in the delivery tab, you can convert ideas into Jira epics, link them to Jira issues and monitor their progress. This view helps ensuring that all tasks are aligned and progressing as planned, providing a clear overview of the delivery status. Now we do have a dedicated video just for that. So if you want to learn how to streamline your product development process and quickly kickstart new projects and initiatives using Jira, make sure to watch that video.